welcome back week four lecture one uh, this week we turn our attention to a political environment and as you might have noticed on a Moodle site we are covering political environment over the course of the next couple of weeks so uh, let's talk about the uh, political environment and its role it plays in the business world let us now try to define a political environment by definition, political environment includes all the laws, government agencies, lobbying groups that influence and restrict individuals or organization in society. Let's now try to unpack this particular definition. So, laws, government suggests and implements a number of laws over the course of their operations in terms with the political parties. But what is also important that those political um, laws and regulations are implemented and obeyed by all participants in the business environment. Now, in week three, we spoke about the laws, but for the purpose of this particular unit, laws will come under political environment. Now, uh, government agencies, when we talk about them, those are the legal um, uh, establishment that government sets up in order to make sure that all the players within a business environment follow those rules and regulations very closely. They don't work directly at the government supervision, but they are businesses established themselves with the help of the government uh, that with strict instructions to follow and implement the rules and regulations within a, a business environment. Now, lobby groups, on the other hand, are formally organized organizations, not from the government, but within a business environment, that they, that they aim to influence a political outcome linked to the particular industry, market, or the product. We've seen over the last 10, 15 years, the, the, the massive uh, power of the lobby groups, particularly for the tobacco industry. We've seen changes in the packaging of tobacco. We've seen the restrictions on advertising materials of tobacco companies. We've seen, uh, as a result of those actions, a decline in the smoking rate in Australia. These organizations are very well organized and often in their approach, they look for the general support from the, uh, from the public. We shall now look at the relationship between the government and the businesses. Now, um, these four that are, that are listed on your screen uh, basically um, impact the countries, uh, international businesses in a different way. Government uh, often uh, have a different rules and regulation from country to country, from region to region, from continent to continent, but also on a small scale, like for example, difference in laws implemented in New South Wales versus Victoria, and how they play their role in enhancing the business interaction. Now, let's us, let us unpack each and every one of them. The first one, a liberalization is basically a relaxation of the previous law implemented inside the industry. Often term that is used, it's referred as deregularization, a removal of the old government policies that are restricting businesses to possibly enhance their cooperation and of course they enhance the freedom of within a business environment. Now that doesn't mean that there are no laws, far from it. The laws are there to be followed and implemented, but they might be simply uh, scaled down, uh, eased on the, on, the, on the industries, often pushed by foreign direct investment, free trade agreements between the countries, um, and then they drive the overall implementation of those restrictions. Next point is privatization. Privatization is basically a government transferring the ownership of the business to a different business or possibly to the range a uh, number of shareholders that are buying a publicly available shares. One of the biggest uh, events that took place in Australian economy over the last 15-20 years was uh, deregularization of telecommunication industry where the government sold the ownership of the Telstra through three different publicly run sales of Telstra, Telstra shares.
Well, the government believes that the companies are running better if they are owned by a private um, private investors, and that's true, uh, very much. So it's it's the business itself um, uh, sends more what the mar market demands. They look into the shift and trends within a within a particular industry, and of course they find a better way to tailor the offer for their customers. On the other hand. This investment basically refers to a gradual reduction in uh, financial backing up of the of the businesses, but not necessarily leads to the change in the management. The last point in this week lecture, it will look into globalization. Globalization will be covered in a lot more details uh, in, I believe, week 11. But what we're going to do today is just get the first um, understanding of what globalization is. So basically globalization is integration of the economies, societies and customers through the process of communication, transportation and the trade. Uh, and we've seen that the consumers are becoming a lot more um, uh, interrelated, a lot more dependent and itself is going to drive um, that, that, that it's going to continue into the future in a much faster pace. Uh, however, understanding the globalization, we have to predominantly understand the concept of political, economical, socio cultural and technological changes that are taking place that will enhance the globalization to completely a new level. Until next video, take care, stay safe.